a trade deal that could have a big impact on Nebraska agriculture. We break down the details of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a project that Rosa Stink gets another chance and supporting the future of Nebraska agriculture with the Next Gen program. Get ready for NTV's Grow. A landmark deal years in the making and many farmers say that they stand to benefit. NTV's Grow co-host Steve White spoke with ag leaders and has more on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Every hour we are picking 250,000 servings of popcorn. Mark McHarg grows the food the world wants. Probably at least 50% of this crop is going to go overseas somewhere. While demand for popcorn grows, selling overseas can be tough, especially for beef, where countries like Japan have favored Australia over the U.S., at least on price. We've got a pretty high tariff, I think up to almost 40%. So the hope is what we're hearing, that that particular tariff on our beef is going to go down. The state egg director was just in Japan where he says they love Nebraska beef. Uh, we were really just competing on our high quality. But not the price tag. And now as this new agreement, the TPP, will bring U.S. tariff rates down immediately and then bring them down even more over time. Japan is Nebraska's number one trade partner for beef and pork. Iowa says the deal will make the state even more competitive and could help farmers get more products into countries like Vietnam, where there's a growing middle class. But one country not involved is the biggest. That may be the best news out of TPP is that it's going to force China to realize if they want to be a player in that region in trade, that they're going to have to come to the table. The popcorn company McHarg grows for last week. They sold to Japanese buyers. Their CEO is in Asia right now. Norm Krug tells NTV when U.S. farmers are allowed to compete on a level playing field, they can compete with anyone in the world. Happy to buy our products here in the U.S. 11 other countries joined with the U.S. on the agreement. This map shows the nations who come together today. They represent about 40 percent of the world's economy. They include such nations as Japan, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. Critics of the deal say it will mean the loss of U.S. jobs and business operations to other countries. Hear more on the details of this deal from Ag Director Greg Iba later on here in the show. Now, this is something that stirred up quite a bit of controversy, especially in the meat industry. Lawmakers are now asking federal officials if Americans should even trust the government's dietary guidelines. The official report won't be released until the end of this year, but the proposed guidelines recommended eating a diet higher in plant-based foods like vegetables, saying it's better for the environment than diets based on foods from animals. Lawmakers from both parties expressed frustration about how the government recommendations have shifted. Animal welfare concerns are being addressed with an investigation at the Meat and Animal Research Center located in Clay Center. The interim report was released. You may recall back in January, the New York Times published an article with allegations of livestock suffering for profit. This prompted an investigation into the merit of 33 statements in the article involving research practices in animal welfare. Initial observations can be found on the USDA Gov website. A final report will be released once all of the fieldwork is complete and posted on that site as well. Another controversial project gets a second chance. This summer, Hall County denied a permit to operate a livestock truck washout business. It would be built near Donovan and give cattle haulers a place to clean manure out. The property owner has filed a new request, but this time it won't be heard by the county board since their attorney says they already made their minds up. I'm going to suggest, and I'm not telling anybody, but I'm going to suggest to you that you all have a conflict of interest on this particular issue. Neighbors raised concerns about traffic and odor. The new permit will be decided by the Planning Commission. Representatives from the Nebraska Department of Agriculture will be heading to Europe, and it's all in an effort to promote the state's agriculture exports. 
This trip includes stops in Bulgaria and Germany. The focus, promoting soybeans and soy meal. They will also have promotional outreach with Albers Food, one of Europe's top beef distributors. The trip is possible through an Emerging Markets Program grant from the USDA, a first for Nebraska. And now a real quick update on harvest. Corn so far only about 15 percent is picked. That is ahead of the 10 percent reported this time last year. The USDA reports also show a crop rating of 54 percent fair. Mature corn sits at 82 percent. For soybean farmers, they're 31 percent done with harvest, near the average 35 percent. Last year, you may remember a slow start at just 15 percent this time of year. Of course, harvest underway for many of you out there. And while you're entering the roads and going up and down the highways as well, a lot of officials and farmers encourage you to make sure safety is a priority. Here's NTV's Melissa Newman. That's about ready to harvest. This is the time where we all, us farmers, get to see the fruits of our labor. Fall harvest is one of the busiest times of the year for farmers making it difficult to consistently keep the best safety practices in mind. Sometimes it's a little tough to think that way, you know, when you got a storm coming in or rain or snow or whatever, you know, it's getting late, you want to you wanna get it done. Nebraska Corn Board is now starting a new campaign to urge farmers to take a second for safety during harvest. Just slow down. I been farming almost 30 years. We've never left a crop in the field yet. We've always got it out. It'll always get out. Some additional tips they're offering are to take breaks to avoid fatigue, shut down a combine before working on it, and be cautious driving on rural roads. Wait behind a combine going down the road till you can pass. It's going to maybe add a minute or two to your trip, but just be patient. We don't want anybody to get hurt. And here's something else to think about. ATVs are considered a staple in many operations. And so far this year, Good Samaritan Hospital in Kearney has seen 27 patients after ATV accidents. That's up 50% from last year. Most of those accidents, you know, it's, uh, they're kind of rollover accidents. So you end up with fractures in the skull, diffuse swelling of the brain, uh, hematomas in the brain, bleeding into the cavities of the brain. A common problem, not wearing helmets. Dr. Bader says only 30% of patients involved in ATV accidents wore them. He also mentioned that spinal cord injuries occur quite often as well, which many times leads to paralysis. NTV's Lauren Scharf spoke with one Pleasanton farmer who became a statistic after fracturing his arm so badly he couldn't work for six weeks. You can watch his story on our website, Nebraska.tv. The head of a major farm co-op is being remembered as a humble ag leader. George Ho Wheeler was the CEO of Aurora Cooperative during a period of tremendous growth, from $200 million in sales to more than a billion, and also oversaw construction of new corporate headquarters. Friends say Ho Wheeler was passionate about getting youth involved in agriculture. He died at age 52 after a three-year battle with cancer and leaves behind a wife and three sons. And providing opportunities for young farmers and ranchers is a program called Next Gen. It's available through Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Next Gen program was created by the Nebraska legislature to assist farmers and ranchers who are beginning a career in production agriculture. The program has two parts, personal property tax exemption for beginning farmers and tax credits offered to existing farmers or ranchers who own ag assets and partner with a beginning farmer or rancher. There are videos on the NDA website that show how this program has helped Nebraska farmers. Here's a look at an example. I think I was two years out of college and I, I believe I was farming 33 acres uh, at that time and it gave me a real good land base to, to get started on. It was very beneficial for me and, and it was, uh, I think, beneficial for him as well to have that, that uh, tax credit and that savings. Probably the, the biggest advantage for me was the three-year commitment. The application pro process was, was painless for me. Um, I, I had to uh, submit some information to uh, ensure that I qualified as a beginning farmer. I would encourage land landowners to uh, to look to the future. Um, it's important to get young blood uh, involved back in agriculture. So, 
So getting uh, uh, in, encouraging a landowner to rent to a young and beginning farmer and giving him that opportunity to get started and get established, uh, that, that helps ensure the, the successful future of, of agriculture in, in Nebraska. Now deadlines are fast approaching. Contact the Department of Ag for details. We're going to break down more of the details of the Trans-Pacific Partnership coming up after the break. Later on your grow forecast. Stick around.